Cedar Point. It's the number one rated amusement park on the planet. On this 364-acre peninsula jutting into Lake Erie are more top-rated roller coasters than anywhere else. Dozens of other rides. Live singers and dancers. A nightly laser spectacular. Beautiful resort hotels. A water park. But all this summertime fun and excitement didn't just appear overnight. And the story of how Cedar Point got to be the favorite place for thrill seekers around the world is long and fascinating. Cedar Point owes its existence to Lake Erie and the tempting white sand beach along its northern shore. The beach is what drew the first guests back in 1870. Louis Estelle, a Sandusky entrepreneur, brought them across Sandusky Bay on a small sidewheel steamer named the Young Reindeer. When they got to Cedar Point, folks could change in a rustic bathhouse and go bathing in the lake. Men and women, modestly separated by a screen, of course. Other steamers began making the trip to Cedar Point where you could listen to music played by local brass bands. Visitors picnicked in the meadows and woods along the breezy peninsula and camped if they wanted to stay overnight. These were the simple pleasures that attracted guests to Cedar Point those first summers more than a century ago. The early Cedar Point was not without competition. Other resorts sprang up in nearby communities. Not to be outdone, in 1888, the owners of Cedar Point built a massive structure, which would be the center of resort activities for many years, the Grand Pavilion. Here you could take a meal in an elaborate dining room, listen to a lecture in an auditorium, or even participate in a game of bowling. M could enjoy the Great Western Band and Orchestra as it performed in a nearby bandstand. Those interested in a magnificent view could avail themselves of the Grand Pavilion's distinctive tower. And women and children could partake of more genteel amusements in the nearby Ladies' Pavilion. The beach activities were growing too. Daring young men could take turns flying on the water trapeze. And the granddaddy of today's roller coasters appeared near the Grand Pavilion in 1892. The Switchback Railway is believed to have been about 25 feet tall. Riders would accelerate to the then unbelievable speed of 10 miles an hour or so. And at the end of the ride, since there was no chain lift, the cars had to be hauled to the top with muscle power. Despite this innovation, by the mid-1890s, visitors were losing interest and Cedar Point was losing money. The future didn't look all that bright. But that all changed in 1897 with the arrival of a visionary businessman from Indiana. His name was George Arthur Beckley. And when he arrived in Sandusky, he had no intention of starting an amusement park. Beckley worked for a railroad. In those days before automobiles, Cedar Point guests arrived by excursion train in Sandusky before taking a ferry across to the park. Beckling was just looking into possible destinations for train excursions. But once he came under the spell of Cedar Point, Beckling spent the rest of his life promoting the resort. The Cedar Point Pleasure Resort Company was formed, and with its backing, Cedar Point was bought for $256,000. And over the next 10 years, Beckling transformed the somewhat shabby picnic grounds into a nationally prominent show place. Beckling wasted no time in rejuvenating the resort. The May 27, 1898 issue of the Sandusky Register noted that there were so many improvements and changes, it would require columns to do them justice. The reporter remarked on the fine appearance of the newly painted buildings, the repaired boardwalks, and the lovely flower gardens. The Grand Pavilion's auditorium was redecorated, a pony track added on the beach, the bathhouses were renovated, and 3,000 bathing suits were available for rental. The reporter added that the extensive musical performances planned by Beckling were not only the best ever seen at Cedar Point, but the best at any summer resort. Among the other attractions that summer was a photo gallery set up by W.A. Bishop. Many of the photos you see from these early days came from his original glass negatives. 
The next major change was due to Beckling's business sense. He reasoned that the longer guests stayed at Cedar Point, the better off the resort would be. With that in mind, Cedar Point's first large hotel, the White House, was built in 1901 on the bay side of the peninsula near the boat landing. It had 55 rooms and proved to be so successful that two years later, 70 more rooms were added in two large wings. But the White House was just the beginning of Beckling's plans for expanding accommodations at the resort. 1901 also saw improvements to the walkway from the bay dock to the beach. Arches sparkling with red, white, and blue lights were added and became a tradition for many years. The next year saw the addition of another roller coaster on the beach side of the peninsula. The attraction was known as the three-way figure eight roller toboggan. Located east of the bathhouse, it stood 46 feet tall, had 11 cars, and was built by Fred Ingersoll. Off the beach, a water toboggan allowed you to coast into a refreshing splashdown in Lake Erie. Really daring guests could ride the water swing, where an ill-timed wave would occasionally leave a rider stranded in the surf without a bathing suit. Also in 1902, the ladies' pavilion was moved closer to the beach and became the main entrance to the bathhouse, which was enlarged to 500 changing rooms. And the lawns along the beach esplanade were decorated with flower beds arranged in designs, much as they still are today. A 1,200-seat opera house was built just west of the pavilion for the 1903 season. Guests could see two shows per day at the reasonable charge of 10 cents a performance. The next summer, guests enjoyed the Crystal Rock Castle, a restaurant named after a local beer, which also featured sunken gardens. After Prohibition went into effect in 1920, the Crystal Rock Castle was transformed into a sandwich shop and later served as a popular late night hangout for the bands that performed in the 30s and 40s. Also in 1904, a long covered wharf was installed at the bay landing. When guests got off the ferry from Sandusky, they could see all the way across the peninsula to the beach due to a massive clearing of undergrowth and shrubs. Many picturesque areas resulted, including one with a rustic bridge. Diners at the Grand Pavilion's new grill room had handsome surroundings served by the best of the old and modern. Gas jet lamps and electric lights powered by the park's own power plant. An outside stairway was constructed so guests could more easily reach the second floor dance hall. The sounds of hammers and saws rang out over the peninsula in early 1905 as work progressed on a new hotel. But it was no ordinary hotel that Beckling had conceived. In keeping with his vision of Cedar Point as the Coney Island of the West, it was going to be a magnificent structure, the grandest hotel ever seen at a resort, or anywhere else for that matter. The Hotel Breakers opened in a blaze of glory on June 12, 1905. It contained 600 rooms, most with a view of Lake Erie. Each room had running water, and 100 had private baths a rarity for turn-of-the-century resorts. The Breakers Cafe seated 400 guests. The entire hotel was as long as two city blocks and stood like a beacon on the beach at night. The design was influenced by chateaus Beckling had seen while traveling in France. The Breakers' elegant lobby featured convenient round seats, which have remained as a tradition throughout the years. The ceiling was elaborate pressed tin, and the chandeliers were created by Tiffany artists from New York. Around the lobby were guest services ranging from shops to a barber and a Japanese writing room, which lost its oriental theme after a couple of years. Adjacent to the lobby was the one-of-a-kind rotunda, featuring four tiers of balconies. It was here that the stars of the Metropolitan Opera gave impromptu performances during the teens and 20s. They enjoyed stopping at the well-known resort on their cross-country travels. The breakers' hallways were wide and breezy, and the rooms were equipped with sturdy and summery wicker furniture imported from Austria. The hotel was an immediate sensation and success with resort visitors. The accommodations also made it possible for large conventions, with hundreds of participants to begin being held at Cedar Point. Groups that first week included the State Association of Elks and the annual convention of Ohio County Commissioners. Beckling also opened another major project in 1905, the Shady Lagoons, which remain a feature of the park today. 
The northern end of the peninsula was swampy and bred mosquitoes. By draining the land into three miles of specially built lagoons, Bentley not only controlled that problem, but created one of the park's most popular and scenic attractions. Before long, the lagoons were busy with boats full of sightseers, artists, naturalists, and young people who wanted to get away from the watchful eyes of the older generation. The lagoons also had a more practical side, too. They were used to carry coal to the power plant in the center of the peninsula. The beach also received a lot of attention in 1905. According to advertisements, the bathhouse was expanded to 1,000 changing rooms. Ladies and gentlemen were able to parade down an improved and expanded boardwalk while watching those braving Lake Erie, the water swing, trapeze, and improved water toboggan. More than 5,000 trees, plants, and shrubs helped beautify the grounds. Theatrical entertainment that summer included a film called The Moonshiners, billed as the most sensational motion pictures ever taken from life. 1905 was indeed a grand and glorious summer, and it was impossible to imagine that the wonders of Cedar Point could be improved. But George Beckling had only begun to tap the park's potential. The 1906 season brought Cedar Point's first real midway, firmly establishing it as a true amusement park. The amusement circle ran in a semicircle from the bay landing to just east of the bathhouse. It had all sorts of delightful and mysterious attractions, some of which are easily appreciated and others which remain a puzzle. Who wouldn't wish for a ride on the circle swing even today? But the entertainment value of others, such as the Chateau Alphonse and Cascades, can only be guessed at. Other attractions on the Midway included a miniature railway, auto tour, box ball, shooting gallery, house of mirth, a trip to Rockaway, and a skating rink. But as thrilling as the amusement circle was, another attraction also took people's breath away. The enormous Coliseum was the biggest building many people had ever seen. It stood 300 feet long and 150 feet wide, with two stories, 90,000 square feet of enclosed space. And the unusual domes were 40 feet higher than the hotel breakers. The top floor was used as a dance hall with a massive Rathskeller on the ground floor. All the 1906 improvements were not aimed at guests. Bowing to the needs of summer help, two dormitories were constructed near the water tower just to house the seasonal employees. These essential workers, then as now, did everything from working in the dining rooms, carrying baggage, and running rides, to guarding bathers on the beach. One such lifeguard was Notre Dame student Newt Rockney, who worked on perfecting the forward pass on the Cedar Point Beach in 1913. He returned to marry a Sandusky woman who also worked at Cedar Point the following summer. It wasn't always easy work, but the employees always managed to find some time to enjoy the fact that they were living in a resort. In 1907, it became possible for residents of cities on Lake Erie to travel directly to Cedar Point without stopping in Sandusky. Beckling built a splendid new dock for large ships on the western end of the peninsula as well as a walk from the dock along the lagoons to the resort. The amusement circle remained popular and continued to grow with the addition of several new attractions. The big new attraction of 1908 sounds like something out of the 1990s. Cedar Point added a new roller coaster. The scenic railway was a 4,200 foot long ride that stood 53 feet high and was reputed to go 60 miles per hour. Riders were treated to 18 dips, and apparently very courteous and well-dressed ride operators. Other notable 1908 additions included two restrooms and a check room, all designed to look like Oriental pagodas. The check room remains today as the main structure of the pagoda gift shop. Regular steamship service from Detroit and Toledo was added, and the Indian Shooting Club met for their shooting competition, which would remain an annual June event for more than 40 years. 1909 was the inaugural year for a grand old lady who's missed by many Sandusky residents even today, the steamship G.A. Beckley. Built at a cost of $125,000, the double-ended ferry crossed Sandusky Bay thousands of times, carrying up to 2,000 passengers per trip. 1910 brought several important milestones to Cedar Point, both on the ground and in the air. 
The season marked the debut of the new massive bathhouse said to be the largest of its kind in the world. It had accommodations for 5,000 bathers. The construction forced the removal of the figure eight roller toboggan, which was moved down the beach slightly, rebuilt, and renamed the Racer. The Racer wasn't very tall and didn't go very fast, but it became Cedar Point's first well-known roller coaster. International aviation history was made at the resort on August 31st, 1910. That was the day pioneer aviator Glenn Curtis set a record for the longest overwater flight of his day, 63 miles over Lake Erie. The one hour, 18 minute flight began at a Cleveland amusement park and ended on the Cedar Point Beach. The pilot was protected by little else but a bicycle inner tube in the event of a water landing. But he completed the flight and picked up a $15,000 check from Cedar Point for his success. Curtis's flight was such a sensation, he and fellow aviator Tony Janis returned to the resort over the next few years for exhibition flights, which fascinated park visitors. Cedar Point in 1912 became home for yet another roller coaster, bringing its total to three. The Leap the Dips Scenic Railway was located on the approximate site of today's Blue Streak and thrilled guests until 1935. A vehicle of another kind was beginning to make even more news around this time, the automobile. Cedar Point was not connected to the mainland by a road until the Cedar Point Road, also known as the Chasse, opened in 1914. This seven mile stretch of concrete opened the gates to a flood of cars, which hasn't stopped since. Cedar Point was attracting so many guests that in 1915, Beckling provided another alternative for overnight accommodations, the Cedars Hotel. The Cedars incorporated the three wings of the White House and had a reputation of being a quiet, secluded place to stay. Stained glass windows from Tiffany, which are now located in the Hotel Breakers, were original to the Cedars when it opened. With the addition of the Cedars in 1915, Cedar Point's major attractions were in place and the incredible period of rapid expansion spurred by George Beckling came to an end. He didn't stop improving the resort. He made sure guests always had something new to look forward to every year. But the dramatic changes taking place every year had come to an end for now. Beckling's vision was true, and he had turned Cedar Point into a pleasurable and profitable resort. Cedar Point's guests had every reason to call her the queen of American watering places. Cedar Point continued to flourish during the rest of the teens and 20s. Visitors enjoyed a series of boxing matches held in a large canvas arena near the Bay Boat Landing between 1915 and 1920. In 1918, the Scenic Railway was renovated. The resulting 70-foot tall roller coaster was named the Leapfrog Railway. However, 1918 also was a challenging season because of wartime restrictions. The military refused to permit the use of excursion trains. Coal shortages canceled some steamboat service. And sugar and beef rationing required some creative menu management. Still, Cedar Point prospered. Guests could visit more than 60 concessions and attractions in 1919, including the Aero Joy Plane, the Cascades, the Racer, the Miniature Railway, and Eden Musée. And in anticipation of prohibition in 1920, the Coliseum's Rathskeller was converted to a soft drink establishment. The entrance to Cedar Point Road was moved in 1920. Severe storms had battered the road along the lakefront, so the entrance was moved a couple of miles down Route 6 to give it better protection. The strong attendance caused Beckling to consider building a new 3,000-room hotel at the park. However, he contented himself with a three-story, 160-room addition known as the Bonaire Wing at the west end of the hotel breakers. To make it more convenient for steamer passengers to reach the hotels, a road to the lake dock was paved, and auto trains made regular runs from there to the resort. Cedar Point's first designated kiddie land opened in 1924. That was the same year many popular rides debuted, including the Caterpillar, which had a green canvas tunnel that rose up and covered guests once the ride was in motion. Also in 1924, a devastating tornado struck Sandusky. 
The Cedar Point boat landing structure along the downtown waterfront was destroyed, but the steamer GA Beckling and the resort itself suffered no damage. The resort's convention hall was the site of a dramatic speech by Helen Keller in 1925. Miss Keller addressed 3,000 Lions Club members, convincing them to make assisting the blind the club's main service activity. Over the next few years, several more favorite rides appeared. Noah's Ark featured a wooden boat with moving animal passengers rocking back and forth on a mountain. It entertained guests into the 1950s next door to the Eden Musée. But when you talk about early Cedar Point thrill rides, none top the Cyclone, which opened in 1929. This twisted wooden roller coaster replaced the much milder racer. The Cyclone was built by renowned coaster designer Harry Traver, who also designed the legendary Cyclone at Coney Island. The 72-foot-tall speeding monster struck fear in the hearts of many. Riding it became a rite of passage for visiting teenagers. Unfortunately, the Cyclone was the last great addition to Cedar Point for many years. The whole country would begin its own downhill ride with a stock market crash in late 1929. And Cedar Point's operation was shaken by George Beckling's death in 1931. That would be the last time the G.A. Beckling Company paid any dividends to its investors for 20 years. When the Depression hit, many families didn't even have enough money for essentials, let alone a luxury such as a trip to Cedar Point. Beckling's successors worked hard to pretend times weren't tough. The Leapfrog was rebuilt and became the High Frolics in 1934. The new Tumblebug sped around its bumpy track, causing guests to laugh and giggle. But the following year, the Leap the Dips roller coaster closed and was not replaced. The crowds along the Midway failed to rematerialize. With little money coming in, management couldn't even do the cosmetic maintenance necessary to keep the park looking fresh and fun, let alone invest in big new attractions. Even the beautiful sandy beach failed to attract guests to come and forget their cares. Ten years into the Depression, Cedar Point's management had a great idea. They renovated the dance hall on top of the Coliseum, turning it into an Art Deco showplace in 1939. Then they filled the ballroom by hiring the best big bands they could afford. Cedar Point in the 30s and 40s is memorable primarily for the incredible musical talent that played at these dances in the Coliseum Ballroom. Some of the performances were broadcast nationally on the NBC radio network. The musical entertainment was responsible for keeping Cedar Point going during this time, even as other parks failed. The huge crowds of the turn of the century through the 20s didn't return. But a modest number of guests kept visiting Cedar Point, even as another world war shook the globe. Wartime gasoline restrictions made travel difficult. During the war years, Cedar Point probably would not have survived were it not for the loyal patronage of Sandusky residents. Cedar Point's roster of rides changed frequently through the 40s. The decade opened with the closing of the High Frolics, leaving the Cyclone the only operating roller coaster. But guests could take a trip on the rocket ships. Moon Rocket. A miniature Ferris wheel. And small merry-go-round. And in 1946, Cedar Point's oldest existing ride, the Midway Carousel, was introduced. Despite these changes, the resort's future didn't look bright. In 1951, declining attendance and the increased use of automobiles spelled the doom of the steamer G.A. Beckling. Her last run was on Labor Day. She was towed to Wisconsin for use as a floating warehouse the following summer, a ship of dreams which had outlived her usefulness. Also that year, Cedar Point's signature ride, the Cyclone Roller Coaster, was torn down. A new 10-ride Kittyland Land was opened in 1952, but for most of the people who cared about the resort, it seemed as if Cedar Point was on a path which would inevitably result in its closing for good. Their worst fears seemed to be coming true in 1956. Newspaper headlines told the story. Famed Cedar Point to make way for homes. Cedar Point nears end as resort. 
a real estate syndicate headed by a Toledo businessman, the late George Roos, and a Cleveland businessman, the late Emile LaGrosse, bought the entire peninsula and planned to turn it into a housing development. But Cedar Point's lease as an amusement park didn't end until 1959. So Roos and LaGrosse studied the operation for two years. The first change under Roos and LaGrosse's ownership was the addition of a much shorter causeway between Route 6 and the peninsula. The $600,000 project was opened in 1957. Next came a new marina. Opened in 1959, the Cedar Point Marina is one of the largest on the Great Lakes. Cedar Point's Midway also was enlarged in 1959. The most popular ride of the summer was the new monorail. This futuristic ride took guests on a trip along the current location of the Blue Street. After a seven-year drought, Cedar Point guests could once again enjoy a roller coaster. The steel track Wild Mouse was located on the current site of the chicken patio. The turnpike cars and the new bathhouse opened as well. Meanwhile, the end was in sight for some landmarks. After almost 50 years, Beckling's bathhouse was gone by the following summer. For the next few years, the resulting space would be used for the opening day performance of mass bands from schools throughout the area. The Crystal Rock Castle was being used by the maintenance department. Both it and Noah's Ark disappeared over the next two seasons. Cedar Point showed a modest profit after that first season of Roos and LaGrosse's management. Encouraged by these results and inspired by the then new theme park concept in California, the new management team decided the family-oriented entertainment concept would work at Cedar Point. So they abandoned the housing plans and developed the philosophy of family entertainment into a formula that's been winning millions of new Cedar Point guests for more than 30 years. In 1960, Roos and LaGrosse announced their plans to spend $16 million to turn Cedar Point into an Ohio Disneyland. Many of the park's traditional favorites opened during the next decade as the park grew rapidly. In 1960, the dirt midway was paved, ending abruptly at the midway carousel. The project was completed in 1961. In addition that year, a miniature golf course opened east of the Coliseum in what's now Kitty Kingdom. The rotor and its dropping floor arrived on the midway. The Sky Wheel, a terrifying double Ferris wheel, debuted in the middle of the midway before being moved to its longtime spot opposite the current Centennial Theater. And the popular Western Cruise opened with its paddle wheel boats traveling through the lagoons dug so many years before. 1962 brought the Sky Ride, which gave guests the opportunity to rest while they got a bird's eye view of the many changes taking place in the park. The Cedar Point and Lake Erie Railroad took its first passengers into the threatening and uncharted woods in 1963. Young children who rode were deputized and given pop guns to help defend the train. It was a good thing too because they frequently encountered bandits along the way. The railroad's engines, all of which are named, are antiques that hauled everything from sugar cane to coal in their previous employment. Also that year, the mill race started cooling off guests on the midway. It was retired after the 1993 season and replaced with a soaring Raptor roller coaster. The major investment for the 1964 season was the blue screen, which was unpainted wood for the first few years instead of the sky blue we're used to now. Cedar Point's tallest ride was built over the next off-season, giving the park its 1965 slogan, New Heights and Fun. The Space Spiral's cabin rises 285 feet, but the entire ride is 330 feet tall. 
Besides fun, the 1965 season also reached new heights in attendance. For the first time ever, two million people visited Cedar Point in one summer. Jungle Larry and Safari Jane Tetzloff opened Safari Island in 1965 too. Over 30 seasons, their menagerie expanded to include tigers, leopards, exotic snakes, chimpanzees, monkeys, and occasionally an elephant. Cedar Point's heritage of live musical entertainment was continued in 1966 with the formation of the Live Shows Department, which is responsible for writing and producing all the park's live entertainment. Frontier Town, Cedar Point's first themed area, was founded in 1967 with Shoot the Rapids, a train station, and a gift shop. Over the years, it would be connected to the main midway with a Frontier Lift, which ran from 1968 through 1985 and the Frontier Trail, which opened in 1971. The Cedar Creek Mine Ride opened in 1969. The Eden Musée was removed after the 1966 season and was replaced by the Hollywood Wax Museum. In 1970, the Centennial Theater, named in honor of Cedar Point's first 100 years, opened on the same spot. Also in honor of Cedar Point Centennial, the Million Dollar Midway was built. This is the midway that now features the Cedar Point Cinema, Wildcat, and Iron Dragon. Under the direction of the late President Robert L. Munger, Jr., the rapid expansion of Cedar Point's ride package continued throughout the 70s, including two world-famous roller coasters. The 1976 Corkscrew was the first roller coaster in the world to go upside down three times. Meanwhile, the Racing Gemini debuted as the tallest roller coaster in the world two years later. It towers 125 feet above the midway. The fast rides kept coming throughout the 1980s. Demon Drop, Thunder Canyon, and Iron Dragon. Even with all these rides, attractions, and investment in the best family entertainment anywhere, Cedar Fair President and CEO Richard Kinzel still had more surprises in store. Soak City Water Park brought a whole new type of water fun in 1988. Over the years, Soak City has been expanded to include large playground pools filled with delightful water toys, relaxing and adventurous inner tube rivers, a huge 500,000 gallon wave pool, and the Splash Zone family play area. One year later, an incredible world record breaking roller coaster brought international fame to Cedar Point, the Magnum XL200. At 205 feet tall, it was the first screen machine to break the 200-foot height barrier. And it was the first to travel more than 70 miles per hour. Before riders could catch their breath, another coaster of epic proportions flashed onto the scene, Mean Street. This timber terror debuted as the tallest, fastest, and steepest wooden coaster on the planet in 1991. At 161 feet tall, Mean Streak reaches speeds of 65 miles per hour. In 1994, Raptors soared onto the midway as the first of a new generation of coasters. The inverted thriller turns riders upside down six times as they hang from the track, helpless in the grip of the steely, swooping monster. Thrill seekers stood up to their fear on the stand-up Mattis roller coaster in 1996. Another huge thrill ride changed the skyline in 1998, but it wasn't a roller coaster. Power Tower gives riders a choice. Rocket 240 feet into the sky or plunge to the ground from 24 stories up. The charming Peanuts characters found a home at Camp Snoopy in 1999. Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and their friends entertain our youngest guests daily. The end of the millennium brought the dawn of a new era of ultimate excitement in 2000. The first giga coaster in the world, Millennium Force towers a mighty 310 feet tall. Riders drop 300 feet at an incredible 93 miles per hour. The tallest and fastest double-twisting impulse roller coaster in the world debuted in 2002. Wicked Twister is 215 feet tall and travels 72 miles per hour. In 2003, Cedar Point introduced the ultimate roller coaster, Top Thrill Dragster. 
This fantastic 420-foot tall Stratocoaster launches riders up a 90-degree hill at speeds exceeding 120 miles an hour. This steel screamer once again gave Cedar Point the title of the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the universe. Special attention has also been paid to the resort side of Cedar Point. The 1905 Hotel Breakers now features modern amenities while maintaining its turn-of-the-century charm. The adjoining Breakers East and the 10-story Breakers Towers are the ultimate in accommodations for overnight guests, including magnificent suites with sweeping views of Lake Erie and the beach. On the very tip of the peninsula, Sandcastle Suite Hotel offers deluxe all-suite accommodations, each with its own balcony or patio. Lighthouse Point, which opened in 2001, features a delightful coastal atmosphere with lakeside cottages, rustic cabins, and luxury RV campsites. With all the changes over the years, the Cedar Point of today wouldn't be recognized by a guest who visited in 1870 with two exceptions. The first thing is the beach, the beautiful sandy Lake Erie Beach. The second thing, and the best thing, is the smiles. The smiles that Cedar Point guests have been sharing since the first ferry crossed Sandusky Bay so many years ago. The same smiles that are sure to be echoed at Cedar Point in the future as Lake Erie's summertime tradition continues. With the very best in family fun and excitement. Every day is fun day at Cedar Point. Come see us. It's fantastic. I love the way the bands all play the Cedar Point marching song. Their proudest day is when they play it for a parade down the midway. Fine drum majorettes. And the sound of clarinets And the roll on roll for nets and trombones are so great So Cedar Point is one fine place to take the whole family It satisfies their Sundays and their fun days beginning to end There's plenty there for all to have what they call a ball Winding up the day by resolving to come back soon 